Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog, and I actually don't know what episode number this is going to be yet. Uh, sometimes I like to record a few things in advance in case, uh, you know, we get slow news weeks or, you know, something else happens, something else unexpected happens. So, uh, so today what I want to talk about is something you guys have wanted me to talk about for a while, and I didn't really have any interest in it, uh, which is the, um, the Venom shared sony marvel cinematic universe thing whatever they're calling it uh basically you know venom is supposed to be the first movie in a series of movies uh, that will like all kind of connect in small ways and build towards a big crossover now i've seen a lot of people theorize about the different types of avenues they could go down with this uh, some people were theorizing that uh, you know th these movies are all going to be like three or four standalone movies and then culminate in a big venom event movie and call it maximum carnage so maybe set up carnage in the first venom movie and then pay it off you know after like four or five films and maybe not even go past that like i've here been hearing a bunch of different things from uh sources you know uh all over the place you know uh, some trusted some not so trusted uh so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, I don't know what to, you know, believe anymore. <laughs> so it's the internet. Everybody's out to, uh, make you look foolish. So, you know, you gotta be careful what you repeat and stuff, uh, whenever you get information. But uh, I've been hearing a lot of different things. So I thought we could speculate a little bit on it and talk a little bit about the two films we know are going to tie into this so far. Um, but what I mean by like ending is like do a Venom movie, do like two or three of these other character movies and you know do like a, a maximum carnage movie and then that kind of be the end of their cinematic universe don't th them not planning like you know f further and further in the future and them trying to keep it restrained but to me if you're going to keep something restrained do your first movie do venom <laughs> and then and then you know if that's a success build your universe i mean look at the dark universe thing that universal tried to do recently as a prime example um everyone over there uh, just, you know, we're like, all right, we're going to make this shared universe and it's going to work. And it's like, no, you don't get to decide that. Uh, fans get to decide that. People going and paying to see your movie decide that. So, uh, and it was decided by people. Nobody wants to see a shared monster movie universe, at least the way Universal had originally planned to do it. So, you know, we could get a repeat of that here. But I think uh, Sony at least is getting interesting people involved in these movies. People that I probably wouldn't have uh, even expected to be interested in this kind of source material and that's what makes me wonder what kind of scripts they're you know they're dishing out because the Venom movie had to have besides Ruben Fleischer attached to it and then Tom Hardy he got on there pretty quickly and I'm wondering if it's because it was a script that he really thought was solid and he thought Ruben Fleischer's vision of it was really solid and it sounds like they're doing it you know a very smart way which is get good talent involved behind the camera and that'll pull good talent in front of the camera and that seems to continue here so the other two movies we know about are silver and black which is going to be a black cat and silver sable movie if you don't know black cat she's a character she's kind of like spider-man's catwoman uh she's a love interest at one point felicia hardy um you know rich girl who goes out and like steals things as a cat burglar she's uh had one point had powers to where if she crossed her path you got bad luck for a whole day or something like that i don't know what version they're going to go in the movie with uh if they're going to you know give her an, a power or if she's going to be kind of like a catwoman type um but she is actually a really neat character and she's someone who i've actually cared about a couple times it throughout spider-man's history because there's times where peter really felt a love connection there and uh, but she really just liked Spider-Man. Uh, when she found out Spider-Man was Peter Parker, she was kind of like, eh, <laughs> you know. Uh, so yeah, a little superficial sometimes. But a very great character, Felicia Hardy, is a very great character, especially if done right. Uh, and then also uh, Silver Sable, who runs a group called the Wild Pack in the comic books, and has teamed up with Sandman from Spider-Man a few times as well. Uh, on the few times that Sandman went to the side of good, you know, he would you know roll with uh, Silver Sable, and she's like, uh, you know, a, a mercenary you know, awesome Black Widow type lady. Uh, she's not as, you know, cold maybe as Natasha is, but she has her mission. She likes to carry it out. She doesn't like to fail. And there's even been versions where she was the daughter of Silvermane, who is a Spider-Man villain who we talked about. Uh, uh, there's a character so far listed, and we don't know if it's true or not because it's IMDb, so, you know, you never know who edited it, uh, but uh, someone listed as Mrs. Manfredi, and that is actually Silvermane's wife, apparently. Uh, if Mrs. Manfredi really is in the movie, that's Silvermane's last name, and it could be that their daughter, uh, Silver Sable, is out there in the world. So that's pretty cool if they're setting that up. Uh, Gina Prince uh, Bythewood, 
uh, Beathwood. Hopefully I'm not butchering her last name, her combined last name. Um, but uh, she's she actually wrote a movie I really loved that came out in 2000 uh, called Love and Basketball. I actually really liked that movie a lot. I was working at a blockbuster video when that movie came out, and I really liked it. And she wrote that, and she's done a bunch of stuff. Uh, her, one of her most recent things is, a, uh, I think it's a show called Shots Fired. Uh, yeah, it's a TV series. Uh, and she's written a couple of the episodes uh, for that. And so she's really awesome. I think she is a good choice because I think uh, she comes from a, a different kind of filmmaking background. But she's done, like, police procedural stuff. She's done, like, you know, um, you know, romantic stuff. She's done a little bit of everything, uh, you know, and, and, like, slice of life stuff. And I think she could pull something really unique out of these two characters and probably make me interested in them. So I'm looking forward to seeing what new developments will you know come from this movie i imagine at CinemaCon, since they're going to be dropping venom stuff they're probably also going to drop if they feel comfortable doing it drop information about this movie here and the next one we're going to talk about uh so i i'm, I'm assuming that's going to be a big platform for them to go hey we're making a different kind of shared universe. We're making one with a beginning, middle, and end, and it's like four, four or five films long. Uh, because I doubt, you know, with Tom Hardy doing other things like Al Capone, he's already on that movie uh, doing makeup tests and everything like that. So I, I don't know how involved he's going to be able to be in the promotion of this movie, which kind of bums me out because he's kind of the reason I want I got interested in the movie in the, to begin with, and now it's kind of like, all right, that was that job. Now I'm on to my next job, and it's like, ah, okay. Like I hope I hope that changes as we get closer to the movie, and I hope we see him do more stuff out there because uh, I just keep comparing it to Ryan Reynolds and how Ryan Reynolds really believed in Deadpool and is out there, you know, grinding on, you know, you know, doing fun things on social media with that character. Um, and, it, and it's like I would like to see more stuff like that with Eddie Brock considering I, I'm not a Deadpool fan and that pulled me into Deadpool. I am a Venom fan and I'd like something like that to you know pull other people that aren't Venom fans into Venom. Uh, but uh, yeah, so anyway, Gina, she looks like she'll be a good choice. And then the latest rumor we've heard is uh, Variety reported, I think, uh, the other day um, that Spike Lee is going to be uh, is is eyeing the movie Night Watch. <laughs> Night Watch is a character that popped up in Maximum Carnage, and same with uh, like Black Cat and I think Silver Sable. I think that I don't know if Silver Sable. I can't remember if she was in Maximum Carnage or not. She might have been. Uh, but it's not a bad idea if these all these movies are like a setup to a Carnage big bad Carnage movie. I'd be into that if they were like, hey, we got four movies we're gonna make, and that's it. That's our shared universe. It's four movies. Boom, boom, boom. Done. Um, I would be 100% on board with that, uh, and, uh, and and that way they can plan it better, they can they can know what setup, you know, where they can pay it off, everything will work a little bit more organically, I think, and Spike Lee is a dang good choice, like, when I saw this, I was like, come on, man, really, like, uh, you know, of course the news, I, Variety reported an article on it, but uh, hashtag knows, uh, hashtag show uh, reported stuff on this, and that, sh that, you know, that YouTube channel interests me on some level, because they throw darts out there like nonstop. Like they continually throw darts out there and they're wrong on a lot of stuff, but some of the stuff they get right is like, it, it's pretty ridiculous. So I've learned to not underestimate them as much anymore. So I'm keeping a, a kind of a closer eye on that show. Uh, not really watching it. <laughs> I don't really care to watch it, but uh, but I'll at least, uh, you know, keep an eye out for, uh, if I see them, oh, such and such reported it, I'll at least, you know, give it a look, as, whereas before I used to ignore it, uh, because it looks like they're they're really trying to make their, you know, a name for themselves out there in in the scoop business and in, in the in the world of you know contacts and connections, and that's good. You know, I don't I don't wish anyone, uh, uh, you know, I'm not saying like I hope that they don't do that. I you know I want everyone to grow at what they love, and so if they're out there making those connections, and that's awesome. And then if they're going to be a force to reckon with to, and to, uh, a force to watch out for and consider a, a reliable news source then I will keep an eye on them for now. Uh, but yeah, they're reporting a lot of stuff, and uh, this is one of the things they reported this week about, uh, you know, you know, w basically Spike Lee's involvement. And um, it would be really interesting. Uh, the hashtag show, the news they reported, uh, too, was about uh, the character, how he first appeared in Web of Spider-Man in 1993, and he, his alter ego, he's an African-American scientist named Devin Cr uh, Kevin Trench. I'm sorry, Devin. Uh, Kevin Trench who witnessed a costume man. So basically, he was in an alley, a, a guy in a costume, the night, uh, in the Night Watch costume showed up, stopped him, you know, him from getting mugged or whatever, and the guy in this, the costume died. And then so uh, Kevin takes the suit off of the guy and sees that the guy is an older version of him, a version of him from a future, and he came back in time to, I guess, 
you know, die and pass the suit on to him. So that's how he closes the time loop. Because, you know, every time you do a time travel story, you're like, oh, we have to close the loop. So it's like, all right, this guy found a suit. But how did he find the suit? Oh, he gave it to himself from the future. Um, so that's kind of the backstory of the character. And he's kind of a little bit Spawn-ish. If you look at his, you know, his look and his design, as you see in the picture here, he's a little Spawn-ish. Um, but uh, but it's it's still kind of a neat storyline because it's not supernatural. It's it's more based on technology and time travel. And that could be an interesting element to put into the Venom world uh, for sure. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I, you guys wanted me to mention this stuff, so I thought I'd make a video about the shared universe. We might learn more about this. Maybe they'll lock down Spike Lee. Maybe they'll do some other stuff that they'll announce soon at the CinemaCon panel. I imagine that'll be a great place and platform for Sony to get all this out there and, and eliminate any other speculation that people shouldn't be speculating on and maybe squashing some rumors and then giving us some solid stories to, you know, base, you know, make videos off of and stuff. But I probably won't follow the the production of Nightwatch, uh, which is, by the way, not the Ewan McGregor movie from 1998 with Josh Brolin in it uh, and uh, Patricia Arquette. If you haven't seen that, check it out. It's really awesome. It's a scary movie. Uh, it's not, not that movie, obviously, but uh, I probably won't follow the production of Nightwatch or Silver and Black. Uh, if you guys want to check out stuff like that, uh, I think Silver and Black is going to film in Atlanta later this year. It did get delayed. It's going to be released. It was going to be released next, like, February or something. I think it's getting pushed back even a little bit further uh, because they still haven't even fully cast it yet, as far as I know, and they're not ready to shoot it yet. And, uh, and so, you know, still working on some things behind the scenes. So... I'm not going to follow these movies, but I think uh, Atlanta Filming, at Atlanta Filming on, on Twitter, he was talking about that he might keep an eye, because there's not a lot of production, I guess, in uh, Atlanta this summer, and he said he might follow these movies uh, if they film in Atlanta, and I think Silver and Black is going to film in Atlanta. So, you know, follow him on Twitter if you want. He might post some stuff uh, as we get closer to the production of these movies. Uh, but for me, I'm not going to follow these. I only care about Venom, and then we're going to do the Spawn show, and then we'll do a Scarlet Spider miniseries kind of series of episodes. And then after Venom comes out, when we get in that downtime, after we review the movie and we're waiting for the Blu-ray to come out, um, we'll probably start the Ghost Rider show at that point. And, uh, and then we'll wait for news about Maximum Carnage or Venom 2 or whatever. So yeah, I, I won't follow these movies as closely, but I'll definitely do trailer reactions when stuff like that comes out. And if they re release any big news that ties into Venom somehow, I'll cover it for you guys as well. But let me know what you guys think of this down below. I know some of you already have told me, but for the rest of you, let me know what you think of these. Do you think these are good directors for these movies? I think they are. Looks like they got some good writers. Uh, Cheo Coker, who uh, is the showrunner of Luke Cage, is writing Nightwatch, and there's like three or four writers on, um, on Silver and Black that all have really great resumes. So definitely check out the IMDb pages for Silver and Black. I'll put that in the link down below for sure. And I'll put the variety link here for Nightwatch down below. So go check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.